Welcome to the Advanced Geekery Project Lab, where I'm testing 3D printers for your entertainment and edification. Today we'll be looking at the Creality Sermoon V1 Pro, an interesting new printer from 3D printing giant Creality. My name is David Gewertz and you're watching the Advanced Geekery channel. In addition to testing 3D printers, we also explore maker and smart home technology, stress test servers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into Advanced Geekery for fun and profit. Here's how this review is going to work. Like with most 3D printers, the Sermon V1 Pro has a lot to like, but it also includes its fair share of genuine head scratchers and annoyances. As I go through the review, I'll be giving everything I like a good, everything that's just plain odd, a rating of weird, and everything I don't like, a point for ugly. Think of weird as a measure of what were they thinking and, and ugly as a measure of, uh-oh, that's bad. Let's get started. Many of you are familiar with the Ender name when it comes to Creality, a hugely popular line of open bed filament printers. This Sermoon can be either partially or fully enclosed and offers a range of features that Creality hopes will justify its moderately hefty $500 price tag. I'm not going to give the price a good or an ugly because value is often in the eyes of the buyer. If you like all of the Sermoon's features, the price might be just right, but if you don't need them or think that they're too weird, that price might seem pretty up there. At a little above $500, the price fluctuates a bit. The Sermoon V1 Pro offers a laundry list of helpful features right out of the box. First, as mentioned before, it can be fully enclosed. You can take the top off to allow for some heat release, but the full enclosure, I'm going to put this over here, but the full enclosure allows for a wide range of filament types, including ABS. This earned the Sermoon V1 its first good. The printer also has a front door that can be set to pause the print when opened. I found this annoying, especially when trying to film the printer, but for situations with kids in classrooms, I can definitely see the value. The printer also has a flexible steel magnetic plate with a coating that works amazingly well for bed adhesion. I had no problems whatsoever with any prints sticking to the plate and they're removed fairly easily. That's a definite point on the side of good. Another feature is the built-in Wi-Fi camera that can help you see your print's progress from the smartphone. I found this feature to work quite well and I liked it. The camera gets a good. The app itself is wacky and somewhat annoying. Rather than get alerts just when the print finishes, the app seems content to provide alerts for everything, including when new designs are on sale in the Creality store and when you earn Kuva coins. What are Kuva coins, you ask? Honestly, I don't really know. Creality seems to be trying some sort of gamification, but it's a definite fail and a definite annoyance. Weird. While we're awarding points, let's give our first point in the ugly category. This machine has no USB ports. None. Zilch. Zero. Zed. Nada. No USB ports. That said, you can load prints in either of two ways. Via full-size SD card. Good. Or over Wi-Fi using Creality Cloud. But if you want to hook up a Raspberry Pi and control the printer directly over USB, you can't. Although there is a workaround. And while Creality Cloud is a bit of a pain, another good point goes to it because Creality has instructions for hacking together direct links from both Creal direct links from Creality Cloud. Try that again. Hacking together direct links from Creality Cloud to both Cura and Octoprint. And that is not easy to say. Okay, so the Core XY Sermoon V1 Pro sports an all-metal hot end with a dual-geared direct extruder that heats up to 250 degrees. What that means is the extruder pulls filament through the hot end. Bowden tube extruders have a gear mechanism quite a ways away from the hot end, and while they're a bit lighter, filament can get jammed. The direct extruder also allows for a wide range of filament types. That's a good. That brings us to the Sermoon's touted feature of silent printing. I'm giving this an ugly. Once the printer gets started, it's not terribly noisy, but it gets pretty loud when it starts up.
there's also noticeable ambient fan noise. In fact, I wanted this printer on while doing this with you, but it was so loud that it got in the way of the microphone, and so I had to turn it off. You can hear the microphone, listen. It's not quiet. Not good. Speaking of starting up, the power switch is placed on the back of the printer. Creality could have put the switch on the side that doesn't have the filament holder, like over here. But since the switch is on the filament side, you have to do a very weird, uncomfortable reach around the printer and under the filament to start the machine. That's weird. The Sermoon V1 Pro doesn't have automatic bed leveling. Instead, you have to do typical paper slide action to get the tram just right. But you make your adjustments by tapping on the control panel and adjusting the Z offset in five separate areas of the bed. It's kind of like the worst of both worlds. No wheels and no automatic. Weird. The Sermoon V1 Pro does have two must-have features, a filament runout sensor and a power fail resume feature. Good. Setup for the printer was relatively simple. The company touts out-of-the-box operations, and that's pretty much true. Once I got it working, I didn't even have to level the bed. It ran perfectly once I got it working. As with most electronics, the Sermon V1 Pro ships with a power supply voltage that lets you switch between 110 volts or 220 volts. Here in the US, the right choice is 110, but my unit shipped for 220. Normally, that's not really a problem. But the actual switch for the Sermon is located deep inside the case itself. You can't see inside to place your screwdriver because the access hole is quite tiny. I eventually did get in there and was able to toggle the voltage, but it was an unnecessary pain that earns the Sermon another weird point. The control console is nicely embedded in the chassis, right over there. But you can have only 20 models on any given SD card. No folders, nothing. We set up a model that we print a lot and it has more than 20 components. Even though the models used way less than 1% of the card's capacity, I had to switch to a second card for the remaining eight components in our project. You can compensate this somewhat by using, cloud, by using cloud-based printing from Creality Cloud, but it still gets a, what were they thinking, weird reading. The Sermon V1 Pro has a relatively small build area of 175 by 175 by 165 millimeters. That's pretty tiny for a printer that's above 500 bucks. Some of my test models had to be scaled down for this printer because they were just too tall. That said, it's not so small that you can't get anything done. And with that, let's move on to some actual printing. <laughs> I started off with the basic Benchy. It printed quite well. As with all of the prints so far, I had no problem with bed adhesion or overall print quality. You can see some issues with layer offset and some blobbing and stringing on the final print. Top surface print quality was adequate, but there was some artifacting. I then wanted to print as big a Benchy as this printer would allow. My primary concern was whether it could withstand bridging over the window. So I used some of the sample filament that came with the printer. I ran a quick bridge test. There was drooping over the long spans, but the bridges seemed strong enough to do the larger benchy. Printing the bigger benchy was fun. Because of the low maximum build capacity, I was limited to how big a benchy I could make. You can see the big and little benchies here side by side. As with the little brother, the big benchy had some weird stringing and blobbing artifacting coming out of the doors, but the bridging quality was pretty impressive. I then moved on to the Adelinda Dragon. This is an extremely difficult model to print support free, which is why I've been started using it in my tests. Because the printer is because this printer is the smallest printer I've tried to print on, I was really worried about whether the four very delicate feet would survive to be joined up with the body. But it printed without any problem. You can see how much smaller the print is on this printer than on most bed slinger printers I've tested it on. It's actually quite cute. Unfortunately, there's also the blobbing and stringing I noticed on the Benchy. I'm sure this can be fixed by fiddling with slicer settings, but this is how it performed right out of the box with basic PLA filament. Finally, I printed the Dice Tower. This print came out extremely nicely and didn't show the artifacting that was so visible on the Dragon and the Benchy. Overall, this turned out to be a very nice print, and it showcases what the printer is capable of. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So, do I recommend you buy this? The price is a lot more than other printers with bigger print areas. That said, you do get a lot with the product, including the webcam. Also, the entire frame is made from plastic. I'm not sure how long this will last. Another concern about product life is the build platform. It's supported on only one side, over there. So, whenever you remove and snap in the magnetic plate, you're applying stress to the platform. If this is intended for schools or kids, I'm not sure it's robust enough to handle the inevitable abuse. For hobbyist use, it might hold up, but only time will tell. What do you think? Is this a printer you'd like to use? Let us know in the comments below. My name is David Gewertz. Go out there and make it awesome.